Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Painless360 and in this video what I'm going to do is take you through each of the steps to get your ready to fly armor tank quad into the air safely. Now all this stuff is pretty standard but it's worthwhile going through it so if you're a new pilot you've never done this before you can follow along and get to the end and it'll all work. Now I've been flying armor tank quadcopters as long as I've been flying quadcopters. My very first quad actually came from armor tan so it's a brand and a set of models that I have an Awful lot of affinity for. So congratulations on buying your brand new ready to fly armor tank quad. You've made a great choice. So let's start with unboxing the model and the first things you need to do to make sure it's ready to move on to the next step. Now the model itself will come very well packaged in a box like this. This is my latest armor tank quad. This just happens to be the armor tank badger, but it will work for any of the armor tank models. If you root around in all of the packing peanuts, you'll find not only the model, but you'll find a bag of pieces that will include the props and some other bits as well. And you'll also find the certificate of testing that was done before it left the armor tank factory. Armor tank tests all the models that it builds ready to fly so that when you get it you absolutely know it worked when it left armor Town. and that's going to make your life a lot easier when we come to set it up check all of the bolts are nice and tight make sure that nothing is loose make sure that none of the wires have come loose because it may have been bounced around in transit but with this great amount of packing it should be fine but it does pay just to make sure that all the screws are nice and tight nothing is loose now we're not going to put the props on yet because the first thing we're going to do is to very quickly plug the model the flight controller the usb port is going to be at the side using an appropriate USB cable, plug it into your computer, download Betaflight, and you should be able to look at the flight controller, move the model on the desk, and see it moving on the screen. That's just great confirmation that the flight controller is happy and is all working. Now, this model happens to have already come with a receiver pre-installed, and you can choose that when you order the model. So if yours is already pre-installed, you can skip the next little bit. If yours isn't, then you need to install the S-Bus output of whatever receiver you're going to use onto the flight controller. And on this flight controller, the CL Racing flight controllers that Armatan use, it is here. And you need to connect the ground, plus 5 volts, and the S-Bus signal in. So with that done then, the next job is to create a model on the radio because once that's all set, then we can bind it to the model, to that receiver that you've either just installed or came pre-installed, and then do the actual configuration in Betaflight. So let's jump onto the desk and I'll take you through how to do that in the OpenTX system. Every radio is slightly different, so if yours isn't an OpenTX radio, there's probably some kind of wizard or setup that will allow you to set it up from a multi-rotor, and all we need are the four main channels, throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, which will be set up by default, and ideally two of the channels, one for changing the flight mode and one for arming. Now there is also stick arming, but I'll talk about that at the end. So let me get this radio and we'll have a play. So we'll set this model up on this QX7 FreeSky radio. So let's power it up. And what we'll do is we will select a new model memory and create it off from scratch. So if I just select the menu button, I can scroll around until I find a spare space, press and hold the enter button and say create model. Now this is going to create a very basic model. Some radios will give you kind of a wizard, but if we page across in this model I would give it a name so you can find it again so we can call it badger press the button and that will help us find it again when we come to play with it we'll page across and what we're looking for here is in the outputs there's the standard for inputs and there's the standard for outputs for the throttle aileron elevator and rudder now we need two more channels one for the arming switch so I would give it a name so you can remember what it is, because once you have lots of models on your radio and you've bought lots of armor tan pieces, then you will find it tricky to keep track of which is which. And we're going to use the arming switch. I'm going to use uh, this one here in the corner. If I just move it, it'll set it. So there we go. And then the next job is to add another one for mode. Now, the cool thing about this is that you don't have to have these exactly the same way because we can tell Betaflight how to set it all up. And the 
because the model has already been set up so well by Armatan, we don't need to worry too much about everything. Uh, we just need to make sure the radio is going to work okay and we can arm it. So the mode switch I'm going to have is this one up here. And there we are. We are set. So now we have the four main controls, throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, and we have an arming switch and we have a mode switch. We're ready to go back and bind it. So to bind the model, we're going to have to take the top deck off. Uh, we need to get access to the receiver. There's usually some kind of bind button or process. Then back on the radio, what we're going to do is we're going to press the page button until we get to the first page. And we are going to select uh, bind. I would also, while we're here, do the fail safe for no pulses just for a quadcopter and I'm going to click on bind and it'll start to beep. Select 18 telemetry on then while holding the bind button on the model plug the USB cable in again it will supply the 5 volts needed to the receiver the receiver will flash and the bind is done. Once that's done come back to the radio press exit a couple of times and you should be good. The way to test it is if you turn the radio off, you should either get a warning that it's all unhappy or you should see the LED on the receiver turn to red. Now we've got that done, then we need to go into beta flight and make sure that the radio settings are all okay. So reattach the top to your model using the four screws for the deck or however it's attached on the particular model that you have. Once it's all together, then we're going to plug it back into the computer. Now we have everything all working. So the first job is to power up your radio. And once the radio is powered, then plug it into the USB connection again and open Beatflight on your computer. Now, don't worry because we're not applying main battery power here this is just going to power the receiver like it did before and again we aren't attaching any props or anything so here in beta flight we're all connected again if we move the model we can see it moving on the screen so that's always good and the thing that we're really interested here is in the receiver tab and what we want to do is if we just move any of the controls on the radio we want to see that things are moving in here and that is great it means that we have a bind and that the the S-Bus stuff is all working too. Now what I need to do is first of all move the throttle on the radio and make sure it's moving the right way round. Now by fluke the channel map here is the same as I set it on my radio. So throttle is channel 1, aileron is channel 2, elevator is channel 3 and rudder is channel 4. If you come in here and they're not the right way round then you can very easily change it by going through each of these three options and clicking save until you find the right one. But for me, it all works. Throttle goes from 987 all the way up to 211. Now, if I put all the sticks on the radio to the top right hand corner, all the values are maximum. And that's a really good way to make sure that all the channels are working in the right direction. Most modern radios work that way. So you should find you're okay. If I flick the mode switch, I can see the auxiliary two is the mode switch and the arming switch is auxiliary one and everything is working beautifully. So that's really good. So now we know the receiver is all working and happy, then we need to set up the modes. Now the only two things we need to make a note of here, my mode switch is auxiliary two and I have a three position switch. My arming switch is auxiliary one and we need to remember that. If we go into the modes tab, Armatan only set up a couple of things for us, and that is for angle mode and air mode. Now, I personally like to arm using a switch, which is why I've set it up on the radio. So if we click on hide unused modes, you have all these others in here as well. And that was something that was introduced a couple of months ago in beta flight. So we're going to add a range for arming. So if I flick my arming switch, uh, let's put it onto auxiliary one. There's my arming switch moving. The little yellow indicator is showing you the channel value that it can see on auxiliary one. And what we need to do is we need to bracket the positions that we're interested in. So if it was like that, click save, it would only arm in the very top position. If we wanted it to arm in both the middle position and the top position, we pull the arming piece around. So there we go. So now it's going to arm in the middle and top position. Now, the modes I would recommend that you have to fly in, uh, and if you remember, if we go back 
click save. If we go back into the receiver tab, I flip my mode switch. Mode switch is auxiliary two. We're going to go back into modes and we're going to say in the low position, I'd recommend having angle mode. That's great for a little test. In the middle position, I normally have it as horizon mode. So there we have got angle mode, middle position is horizon mode. And in the top mode, I tend to have it as kind of a rate mode. And I would probably put air mode on for those two um, positions as well rather than have it on all the time just have it on for horizon and for rate mode but what that means is now in the default position when the radio comes on I'm in angle mode and I've also got my arming pieces set as well now that looks really promising if we go back into setup and flick the arming switch then we can see here the arming disable flags has MSP. That just means that it's, we're connected to configurator and it won't arm. If I flick it again, then we see that it won't arm while connected to beta flight, but that's absolutely fine. So now we have that set up, we're going to plug a battery in. So let's jump back on the desk and test we can arm it before we test fly. So now that we have beta flight set up with modes and an arming switch, then we can plug our battery in for the very first time. Now we need to make sure that the VTX antenna is securely fitted. And if you have an ohm meter to pop them across the two terminals here on the battery connector, just to make sure there is a dead short. Now Armatan have tested this before it was shipped. So I'm pretty confident that there isn't one, but it always pays just in case. Uh, make sure that if there is any metal on the strap, it isn't touching anything that it shouldn't be so let's do a power up now the things that we're going to do here uh, first of all we're going to check that the video transmitter and the camera are working so i'm going to take the the lens cover off the camera so that it can see out and we're just going to check that we can arm it now by default armatan has shipped it with the motor stop turned on so the motors won't turn as soon as we arm it we'll have to give it a little bit of throttle but it's always a little bit of an exciting time the first time you plug a model in so let's power up the radio, have that ready, put that to the side and then we're going to plug the battery in and hold your breath. Now that beeping that you just heard is the sound of a happy quadcopter. So if we just put that to the side, first of all, let's check we can actually arm it and it'll fly. So we're gonna flick the arming switch into one of the two positions that we just set up. That means it's armed. If I increase the throttle, we see the motors are running. That's great, the arming switch worked beautifully. That's fantastic. Now, if you are going to do the other way of arming, which is using stick arming, which some people quite like, the Rather than set up the arming mode as we've just done, you can arm it with a stick holding the throttle at the low position and rudder right. And then to disarm it, you go the other way. That's a very old fashioned way of doing it. Most pilots do it on the switch, but some people really like still to arm it in that way. If that's the case, you have to be a little bit careful. You have to make sure that the minimum throttle goes a little below 1000 in the receiver channel for it to arm and disarm. So just be aware of that. If you're having issues with stick arming, then it's probably that the travel on the throttle value or the rudder value is wrong. And that's where you need to check it. Personally, I'm a fan of stick arming. Now, the next thing we need to do is let's power up a little screen. If you've got your FPV goggles, you can do the same thing. And hopefully when we power it up, hey, there we go. We actually have an image as well. So that is all fantastic. Now I might move things around in the OSD, but we're at a point now where we know we can arm it. We know it's going to fly. We can attach the props. So let's do that bit next. So the trick to fitting the props, get them out of the little bag that they come in, is you need to have a look on the top and you'll notice that they are actually different ways round. They're actually made to go in either clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. Now the default in beta flight is that these two are going to go in a clockwise direction, that way round, and these two are going to go in an anti-clockwise direction, that way round. So what you need to do is with the writing on the top, look for the little arrow to see which way they're going to go. So with that done, then what you need to do is to 
pop them onto the motors and do the lock nut up nice and tight. Use a little spanner and once that's all done, we can go into the garden and we can give this its first test hover. So I'll see you there in a second. So here in the back garden, then the thing to do, make sure you're over somewhere nice and soft in case you've made a hiccup installing the props. Flick the switch to arm and then increase the throttle gently and the quadcopter should rise into the air in a nice stable way. Now these are tuned from the factory from Armatan, so it should fly beautifully. Don't go too mad on the first flight, I would just hover it around, go through a battery, make sure that the video transmitter, everything is completely happy and then you are set up. Now there are a number of things that you could go back into beta flight and check. Personally, I would probably go back in, change how the on-screen display looks. I'd probably turn the motor stop in the configuration tab to be set that so as soon as I arm the quadcopter, the uh, the props start turning, which uh, is not great if you're a beginner, but if you uh, are an experienced pilot, that just means that you can do more kind of freestyle or racing maneuvers with them. So with that all done, there's only a couple of last things to show you, some little tips and tricks with your new Armour Tan quadcopter. Now you can access the beta flight menu from your radio to change things like the settings on it, the PIDs, the video transmitter settings. If you hold the throttle rudder to the left and push the elevator stick all to the top, then you will access the beta flight menu and you can have a look around there and you can set everything up. Now the way that Armatan send out their quads, they also have the camera control connected to the camera at the front as well. And if you have one of those models, you can also access all the camera settings directly from the Radio 2 without having to do anything else. And what you do is to enter the simple setup menu, hold both sticks towards each other in the middle, then you navigate with the right hand stick and to press enter or change values, you move the left hand stick left and right. Or if you want to access the display menu, then hold the left stick to the bottom, the right stick to the top, and you're in the display menu. Again, same navigation functions. Use the right stick to navigate and the left stick, it's left and right, to select enter or change the highlighted value. So that's it. You're all set. Congratulations. You've set up your Armatan quad. You can now go and fly and have fun. So fly safe, be responsible, and have a wonderful time. Happy flying.